Today on the Base Channel, we're talking about Dingwall's Combustion Base. So with all due respect to this particular instrument, it's kind of old news. There's nothing new here. You've probably seen it. For those of you who are interested and want one, you've probably spent hours upon hours of research on their website and various other online retailers that offer this instrument. So there's not much that I can say about the type of wood and stuff that you may or may not already know. But in case you don't know, we're just gonna touch on what this bass has to offer in a quick, casual fashion. But before we do, let's hear another tone. That tone you just heard, the one before it, and all the ones that are coming after it are all running through the exact same preamp. I forget what it is, because I did it a couple weeks ago, it's right here. And the only difference that you're hearing is all done on the bass itself. So it was probably the Ampeg SVT suite, whatever tone I dialed in, I left it the same for all tones and the difference of tone that you're hearing, to say it again in a different way, is all done with the onboard controls and the pickup selector. So starting off with the headstock, we've got the two on a side tuning configuration with the signature Dingwall headstock shape. These are the Hipshot Ultralight in what I think is called Smoked Chrome. Uh, base is made in China, and uh, we can see that it's got that really cool, it covers all four strings, string retainer thing. Um, we got our nut, it's obviously multi-scale. It's got the signature small Dingwall frets that are really comfortable. Maple neck, maple fretboard, offset dots, dots on the side. Moving on down, uh, 24 frets by the way, we have three, what are they called, FD3N, the Neodymium Dingwall pickups, we have three of them. The controls here are the volume, the pickup selector, and then the three band EQ, I forget if it's treble middle bass or bass middle treble. Either way, the one in the middle is the middle. Your switch here goes from passive to active. It's got the individual string saddle bridge thing, whatever that's called, and all sitting on this gorgeous quilt maple finished in this really rad violet or purple or something. It's that color between red and blue. to the backside, we've got a four bolt bolt-on maple neck. A uh, really comfortable cutaway here. Let's see, I can see it in the monitor so you can see it too, there we go. Uh, we've got our control cavity cover and this really cool magnetic battery thing, this is an 18 volt preamp. All they say on the website is that this is an EMG preamp. My best guess is that it's the EMG EQ64. I'm pretty sure that's the one. Either way, it sounds great. As you may or may not know, the NG2 and the NG3 come with the dark glass tone capsule, which is not a bad preamp, but every time I hear it, it's, it's good, but I think I like this one better. Rounding out the feature set, we have this countersunk, kind of old school saucer looking input jack, which uh, if you don't angle it exactly how it needs to be, will not accept a right angle plug. 
So if you're on stage, Josh and I learned this the hard way on a gig, um, use a straight angle cable. We got our slightly spectery offset rear button. We've got our front button up here. And I mean, really it's a straight across the board dingwall. And that's not to say anything dismissive. Dingwalls are great. If you like them, you know, if you hate them, you're learning. Um, this is as dingwall as it gets. And this is rad. I think I like it just a touch more than the NG series because of that preamp. I really like the frequencies that they chose. I am an EMG artist. I'm an EMG fan. I love EMG. So let's hear another tone. thing I think we're going to touch on is this pickup selector. When it is all the way forward, which is clockwise, uh, it's front pickup only. When you roll it back to position, which I think that's position four, so then you roll it back to position three, which is counterintuitive to me, but you roll it counterclockwise one notch, then you're getting kind of the, the jazz bass sound, which is the front and rear pickup together. Rolling it back one more over to position two, uh, which again, counterintuitive, you're getting the Stingray sound, which is these two pickups here, the middle and the rear, which if I didn't say it before, the front pickup is kind of the pseudo P bass thing. So we got a pseudo P, a pseudo jazz, a pseudo Ray, and all the way counterclockwise in position one, we have just the bridge pickup, which is that pseudo jazz sound. But even though the other position is pseudo jazz, this is like back pickup, like jaco -y type of sound. In my personal opinion, without the help of the onboard EQ, the position one, just the back pickup can be a little bit too thin and weak and honky and nasally to be useful in some applications. Now, this next tone you're about to hear does feature that back pickup with some EQ tweaks to kind of help fill it out a little bit more. I played a Rush tune back in the era when Getty was playing a Rick, so it kind of worked to have a thinner, treblier, more articulate type of sound. Um, but that's just one thing to know, so here's that tone. Let me know what you think. So I think that's just about all there is to say. Again, like I said, it's straight across the board as dingwall as it gets, and it's awesome. I actually really like this bass. I like the way it feels, I like the way it sounds, I love the way it looks. And I hate the way that I have to put it back into a box and send it back. Again, that's about all I have to say. So if you like this video, give it a like. If you hated it, give it a dislike. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you whenever it is that I see you.